Like, you guys got they got knife crime. We be talking about gun violence. Yeah. United States they got nah, knife it's, crime it, it over is, there. It's real though. <laughs> it's it's a real problem out there. I'm not even kidding. Like, um, you know, we have you get stopped in the street all the time by someone saying, "Oh, do you support knife crime?" And you know, do you want to donate? I've done it a bunch of times. Um, and like, yeah, it, like, and, and we you know I've got friends who carry knives on them, which like, it's kind of like a. Kind of yeah. some form of protection, I feel. Yeah, like, and least. you're not. I don't really like frown upon them for doing it because the situation in London is like such a head fuck that it's like if you're involved in that in the wrong kind of crowd, you kind of just have like you just don't you know anything can happen yeah. and like it is like it feels a lot more dangerous than it is out here in terms of like you just don't really go out too late or don't too when it's dark and shit. I mean. People will be calling me pussies in the chat and shit. Fuck you, but I'm just not trying to get jumped because I mean, <laughs> yeah, everyone gets you, jumped in. You in gotta London. be careful, um, realistically. But yeah, you'll get jumped. Like you'll get checked. You'll get all of it. Uh, I haven't yet. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, look at me. I'm a fucking walking hey mug me sign. So, <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, but yeah. Thanks, truck. But yeah. Yeah. The fucking always hell and noise is going on in New York and shit. But like no one's got like no one's got guns over there at all. I mean, you could get one if you're in with the wrong people, but yeah. you have to be pretty deep. I feel that's so wild because me and me and Drew were fucking in traffic today, and I was like, I'm open to living outside in the United States, but the first thing I searched was fucking gun laws, mm-hmm. and the only three states have the right to bear arms are the United States, Do Mexico, you, and Guatemala. Have you got a gun? Have you yeah, I gun? C- bro, I carry my Glock all the time, twenty four seven. I don't have it on me right now because I don't. You can't you have to use it in New York. Yeah, but you come you come visit me in North Carolina. I always have my gun on me. <laughs> Crazy. I, I'm in the house with my fucking Glock on me Damn. cooking Isn't, food. I heard there's like, like <laughs> I heard there's like you know uh, like people get pissed off out here if you're like uh, is it called like concealed carrying or like open carrying or some shit. In New in New York you can't have a gun at all. New yeah, York's I, the I most mean, strict sense. in the country. Right, to me that period. makes sense. But like no, like you go. To, few hours in north my home state new hampshire you can conceal you can open you don't need license you can walk in a store buy a gun and walk out no but what i was saying you is can buy a shotgun don't at like Walmart people get kind of Carolina. pissed off when you say some when you like open carry or some shit isn't that like no it's fine no oh, okay depends i guess it depends on what state you are but america's gun culture is not like oh okay mad okay i yeah. guess so, some states i guess what you're getting at is because the law is different for every state some states don't allow open carry at all Oh, okay. Some states you have to conceal. Damn. Um, yeah, I find it just mad. It, like, tripped me out when I was in the fucking... I mean, this is, like, dumb, but like, I was in the airport and the fucking... You know, the first thing we see when we came into JFK was just, like, a dude with, like, fucking... A guy holding a whole rifle, a guy with <laughs> yeah. a fucking, fucking gun on his fucking side yeah. and shit. I was like, okay, cool. I could die. <laughs> they, they don't have... You guys just don't have... You, police don't have them over there? Either? Well, you'll like, see, it. You'll see like, armed feds in, like... Uh, Maybe like banks, maybe yeah. um, near like near the Buckingham Palace, you'll see them everywhere, um, and like airports, maybe as well, probably airports too, yeah. Um, but and, and a lot of the time, like if they've got a gun in public, it probably doesn't even have bullets in it. It's probably just like just for either sure. either pellets or or just doesn't shoot. I don't fucking yeah. know. Um, but yeah, um, I think it would be a very bad idea to give guns to the UK because I think. Yeah, it, everyone would just go crazy and start killing each other because we're very, like, fuck you. I don't yeah, care about yeah. you, kind of like, like yeah, you don't really care about anyone you don't know, kind of thing. So, but sure. When did you um? What got you into music initially? I, it was all on accident. I I genuinely didn't um, do music, at all. I didn't have any intention of doing music and uh until, well, I was doing like graphic design and shit before, and I was a graphic designer since I was like eleven um and i did like animation and stuff i started doing youtube intros for youtubers and shit uh and we were like some of the first to do that and then i went to my first ever gig in london which was also my first time being in london uh, that was a scarlord gig uh being like a mad like trap metal fan it was my first experience here and i literally it was the first time i heard peep it was the first time i heard people like uh killy it was people i heard like first time i heard I just uh, like it was my first experience really like experiencing music mm-hmm. you know authentically you so know? Wait, you weren't were, was this a show you went to yeah like, they were it, all performing no 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 no. it was like uh it was scarlet's gig and his dj was like, okay just playing they were playing mad tunes and, and i was like, like whoa that. there's this whole like 
like every song they were playing. But you were, like, you what were the fuck into Scar Lord at this point. That's why you. Yeah, of, yeah. Oh, I was. Oh, I used to be like a massive Scar Lord fan, and gotcha. Uh, and yeah, we, he at the end of the gig, he came out and just kind of like spoke to everyone for ages, and we just chilled with him. And he was like, we were just doing the dumb like fan shit, like oh. Yeah, should should I start rapping? Start? Yeah. And and he was like, yeah, man, fucking do it. And and now like, uh, him saying yes to doing that has kind of like, created his like only like rival in 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 the UK, which is kind of funny. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So shit, when did you hear uh, Scarlet for the first time? What was that like? Oh god, I mean, it kind of it was, I think probably through like Spotify recommended. I was mm-hmm. listening. I used to be huge, huge X fan. Oh, I still am uh yeah i I listened to x all the time and then like it was when spotify started doing their like suggested songs and shit yeah and i cameo was on there which is now also just full circle because i'm talking to him now and it's it's, just it's crazy Um, uh cool dude yeah like all that space god shit that used to rap about that that shit was fire um so it was him it was kami it was uh project it was um fucking and yeah and, and and scar came along and and that was like his uh that was, it was some old like his, his shit before heart attack and then and then i saw on youtube homepage heart attack came up and i i realized I was like who is that guy and then i realized it's mazzy maz who scarlet's old channel yeah. and i used to watch him and it was just like i was like what the fuck's going on <laughs> so, yeah, totally it was totally it's like night and day like totally different people almost but yeah, I, I respect it still you know what i mean heavy like his YouTube channel was like totally, he was like totally different, and then Scarlord's like this dark character, and I'm like, it's very interesting. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, the contrast is very interesting. Yeah, but man. um, which is okay because you know, you look at music today, it's kind of like professional wrestling. Yeah, you're literally allowed to take the people take on characters all the time, and 100. percent Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And but, it's weird because I'm I'm going through like a like a like a character questioning myself moment. Other, I'm just like, I'm I'm. Darky's an interesting person. He says a lot of shit, and it and it it makes you question everything. And I'm like, oh shit, now I got, like, it, he he's very smart. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Uh, and it it's nice to know that he cares enough to say his opinions on my shit. But like, you know, I've like I said, I, I was never planning to be a musician. Um, so I've somehow got this far already with whatever combination of decisions I've made so far, and it's 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 being uh very difficult and then seeing coming out here and seeing how people who are in the same position as me who are up and well and up I don't know. <laughs> people who are doing all right um you know like biv and stuff and seeing their work rate it's made me like realize oh okay so like i should be approaching my work this way this is how other people do it and like their system works like i've had a lot of um not issues but just like uh, a lot of like mental turmoil of just like how uh, you know is this the right decision am i mixing this right because I, I don't have any mm-hmm. I don't play any instrument i'm not even like musically talented like that yeah so uh, you know but like so i'm just studying like 200 percent everything um but yeah and and yeah darky's helped with that like crazy he's given me a hell of advice and yeah no uh, he's a really he's a really good person when i get back to the uk though i'm fucking shit up I'm not even kidding <laughs> <laughs> i'm ready i've been thought about everything so i'm i'm, I'm always plotting I think it's kind of um, natural, especially in, in someone who's in your position, to kind of have those thoughts because it's not like this isn't like an everyday thing. It's like all of a sudden, it's like you have fans, you have people that listen to this thing called music that's just organized noise that you somehow make. Yeah, and it's, it's just like, and you have you know more money than you would probably working like a regular job now. So it's just yeah, kind of like, and you have all this time. So it's like I think it's very natural for someone in your position to kind of feel like. You know what I mean? A little standoffish, like what the fuck is happening? Yeah, you know literally. What I'm yeah, it's not like overwhelming. I'm fine. It's just, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of big like life decisions are like, like in the process of being made, and it's just all just like, whoa, this is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then there's also just like the the feeling of like, you know, uh, and this is what Darky told me. He was like, you should be fucking. Um, what's it called when you uh, manifest shit? He's like, you should be manifesting stuff. Don't stop talking about. Um, what if it doesn't happen? But I'm just sat here thinking, yeah, you like, can't you know, have that mentality. Like, I, at all. I still have that kind of like, oh, you know, I've, I've gotten so far and I've worked so hard, and it's like, you know, what if I lost it? And that, but that's good because that drives me and it makes me go mm-hmm. like, okay, so I just have to make sure I don't fucking lose this shit. Um, but yeah, and no, I'm just so so passionate about it. I just gotta, yeah, keep going and fuck it up when I get back to the UK. <laughs> so did X get you into music initially? Like, I know Scarlord made you want to make music, but did X? like really get you into like a, a music fan uh yeah, pro- probably yeah, well x is how i g- 
got into hip hop. I never really like fucked with rap like that. Mm. I was doing like EDM and dubstep and shit. That we uh, listened to as like a kid. Well, yeah, yeah, as a kid, like I'd, on the on the on like the school bus and shit, I'd have like Skrillex and shit open and just playing like all that shit. That was like that was crazy for me. And and um and then like Monster Cat came out. I don't know if you remember Monster Cat. They were like huge in the EDM mm. scene on YouTube, and I I loved all that shit. And then. Uh, yeah x was like i was like the more aggressive shit like whether it was dubstep or edm i was like the more aggressive shit and then i guess when i found out there was aggressive hip-hop i was like oh cool this is sick this is like i can get to hip-hop now <laughs> yeah. and then and yeah it went from there spiraled on after that so but yeah my first first experience with music was actually just dubstep and i think i can remember this song I'll, I'll have to think what, did, what was it that you heard you, was, you, was it skrillex initially you just it was actually just friends? some like uh it was on this I'll have to find it. I have it somewhere on my iTunes. I, I'll have to find it. I'll find it later. <laughs> it was like the actual gotcha. first song I ever listened to. And it's because like, I just remember, like I have the, remember when iTunes was like, oh, you have to pay 99 cents or 99p for the song. And then you, and then you download it and it's your song. Now we've got all this like streaming shit. Uh, I still have it on my iTunes from when I actually bought the song. <laughs> so, yeah. So sure. What was, um, what was it like growing up in Oxford? I know like we kind of went over like, you know, you said it was kind of boring out there, but it was like school, like what was the home life like? Uh, well, yeah, uh, school was okay. Uh, like kind of feel like I had like probably the average kind of like bullying and shit. Um, but yeah, no, school was okay. Uh, I'd got essentially just okay grades. Like I, I got yeah. like uh and, and shit. And then uh, college was when like for some reason I decided to just kind of um just like do a whole like rewrite of my myself you and became shit. a bad I, lad n- not really bad. <laughs> i mean yeah kind of yeah <laughs> but more just like e- more like, just like edgy lad yeah and you were edgy lad just, at that point you were yeah. all the way bad yeah i went way i went edgy. deep with it and then i, I looked like a prick <laughs> yeah, and, angsty then, lad. and then i kind of fell back a bit and now i'm, I'm me so, <laughs> but yeah no um yeah uh you know family and shit so i've always been like mad supported by my family uh that's good i think a lot of people don't appreciate that enough when it happens yeah I, although i did like uh my parents did split up when i was uh like i think i was one or some shit mm-hmm. um so i haven't had like any contact with my biological father for fucking over a decade or maybe longer um and yeah that's a weird thing that i'm dealing with too because it's like like do i message him do i I'm hey like, man, I'm like 21 now. Like, do I? That's I'm really. A, I'm a guy. I'm a grown ass man. Do I go talk to my dad, or do I not? I don't know. I'm just weird. This kind of, I guess, that depends on how you feel. I, yeah, thankfully, I don't I'm know how only, I feel. I'm one of the only people in my friend group who was fortunate enough to have a dad. So okay, you know, yeah, I really yeah. like appreciate that. But um, I guess that's a, a few of my friends got in contact with their dads again later on in life, and they're glad they did. A few yeah. of them were like, "Nah, fuck that guy." That's yeah. just kind of how you feel at the end of the but day. But it's more you know? of like, what if, like, I mean, I don't know anything that he's doing. So, like, what if, like, he, I don't know, I don't know what, how old he probably is, but he's probably like in his like fifties, sixties or some shit. So mm. I'm just like, are you gonna die soon? Like, <laughs> yeah, like it's go, worth my time. Do I need to go see you before you die? I'm gonna regret <laughs> that shit. Like, but it's yeah, it's all kind of like jokes at the moment. So I, yeah. I don't really know. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your mom, mom kind of raised you herself. Mm. Mm. Shout out, mumsy um yeah no she's done everything i'm so grateful to have my mom um when i was like i must have been like six or seven mm-hmm. uh my stepfather came in the picture mm-hmm. uh and he's done a lot uh we've had our fallouts and shit and that's sorted now which is great um but yeah no a lot of love to my mom she's done everything for me uh and yeah basically i'm hoping like once i get up i can do some shit for her i want to you know buy her a house or some shit yeah um definitely because like yeah she's always had, always had like money issues and stuff i want to just like fix mm-hmm. that for her <laughs> that'd be nice uh and so then, she had a pro- she, she had to work very hard growing up oh wow well, yeah i mean we were on we were happen. on uh what in the uk we call it benefits it's like mm-hmm. uh it's like it's kind of the same thing over here uh, do you have benefits like when you have child yeah or some shit we have child. like um we have like section eight which is like housing and then we have yeah like yeah EBT, we were in like a we were like in like a council house like and that. shit and we were we were in uh like my, I remember my mom telling me that she used to like, she'd like, uh, we'd have like fifty pound to last us the whole mm-hmm. like two weeks or some shit, and she'd just spend it all on food for me, and she'd just eat like like crackers and and cheese and shit, and I was just like sacrifices, man. yeah, and yeah, yeah, and she's always like, and, and it makes sense now because she's always just like, 
any like even as a kid like she she spoiled me rotten she's like anything i wanted she, she'd just want me to have like the best life and so yeah I, a lot of respect goes to my mom just for that and uh i'm gonna pay her back one day so 